Welcome to FamilyDoctor.Expert. I'm Grant Blaschke, I'm a GP, and today we're talking about hyperthyroidism. Every few weeks, probably once a month or so, I see someone come in who's been dropping a lot of weight. They are noticing that they really can't manage hot temperatures. They're, they're sweating, they might have the shakes. Often their mental health is gone a bit off the boil. They're not sure why they're stressed about things. They're not coping with their work or at home. And, and my alarm bells ring and I think, oh, maybe this is hyperthyroidism. So what is hyperthyroidism? Basically, your thyroid gland is in your neck and you make thyroid hormone as the sort of thermostat of your body. If you've got too much thyroid hormone, it speeds everything up. If you've got too little, it makes everything slow down. And your thyroid gland sits in your neck and is controlled by a hormone secreted by your brain from the pituitary gland. There's a hormone called TSH, which tells your thyroid, make more thyroid or make less thyroid. So there's this terrific thermostat system. So what happens when it goes wrong and how does it go wrong? So by far and away, the commonest cause of hyperthyroidism is a disease we call Graves' disease. It's an awful name because Graves sounds a little bit like a cemetery or something, but it's nothing to do with that. It's just named after Mr. Grave. And what happens is that your body's immune system, as you know, it's fighting off infections, but occasionally it accidentally attacks the thyroid gland. So there's these little thyroid antibodies telling the thyroid gland to make more thyroid hormone, even though you don't really need it. And people have all sorts of effects. As I mentioned to you in the introduction, particularly they have mental health problems, sort of anxiety, they might get tremor in their hands, they um, often have dropped a lot of weight, they get heat intolerance, so they really can't manage the hot weather at all. They may be getting palpitations or fast heartbeat or an un irregular heartbeats, one we call atrial fibrillation. Um, they might be having some stomach problems, often some diarrhea, irregular menstruation, loss of libido. So you can see throughout our body, we've got these thyroid receptors. So it has a lot of effects around the body. So your doctor's gonna have a look at you and, and talk to you about these symptoms that you've got. And they'll particularly wanna have a look at your eyes because the thyroid um, gland and thyroid hormones can particularly cause some minor eye abnormalities. So there's one called lid lag where your doctor will look at your eyes and get you to look up and then to look down and often the eyelids are a bit slow to catch up. Um, there's a more serious eye disease called exophthalmos, uh, which is rare luckily, but it's where you get a buildup of inflammatory tissue in the socket of the eye and the eyes can really be quite protruding and this is obviously very distressing for people and something that may require more attention possibly even surgery so i've said to you that um, uh, the commonest cause of hyperthyroidism is graves disease but there are other causes so sometimes it's just the thyroid gland has become inflamed sometimes from a virus what we call Hashimoto's or subacute thyroiditis sometimes it's to do with pregnancy so after pregnancy some women will get an inflamed thyroid sometimes High thyroid is to do with having food that's got too much iodine in it. Particularly um, seaweed can do that. Or occasionally people have gone and had a special x-ray or a radiological procedure where they've been given high doses of iodine and this can result in um, hyperthyroidism. So these are things that um, the doctor will want to consider. Now, what tests are they going to do? They're definitely going to want to do a blood test. They'll have a look at your two thyroid hormones, T3 and T4, to look if they're elevated. They'll look at your TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone. That's that hormone that goes from your brain to your thyroid gland. And generally, if your thyroid's making lots of thyroid hormone, the TSH will go down because the brain thinks, well, 
we've already got too much thyroid hormone hanging around. We can check also for the anti-thyroid antibody that I mentioned, and that's very useful because if we find that, then we're pretty sure that we're dealing with Graves' disease and we know what to do with that. So these are some of the diagnostic uh, tests that your doctor may want to do. They may want to do a thing called a thyroid scan. This is actually a nuclear medicine test, which will have a look if you might have a thyroid nodule, for example, and these nodules can be hot or cold. And in particular, they're very keen to exclude any possibility of a thyroid cancer which is obviously pretty serious and something they want to detect. So there are a few tests that your doctor may want to do. Now, there's lots of treatments that we can use. Um, the first thing the doctor might do is start you on some beta blockers, and these turn down what's called your sympathetic nervous system. That's your automatic flight or fright system. And by turning that down, it reduces the shakiness in the hands and the fast heartbeats and the sweatiness, and, and that can work pretty quickly once you start those, so that's a good thing. But you've still got thyroid high thyroid in your blood and so um, you'll often be started on another medication called carbimazole and this medication is very effective at bringing the thyroid levels down but its effect on all those clinical symptoms can take a little bit longer weeks to months so um, that's why the beta blockers are quite useful now some important side effects of carbimazole, very, very rarely it can suppress the bone marrow. And so if you happen to be getting a sore throat or flus on it, you do need to go back to your doctor and get them to do a blood test to double check that you haven't got that side effect. As usual with all these videos, don't rely on this just for taking the medication. Look at the full product information, speak to your doctor. Now, apart from the medications that we can use, your doctor might refer you to have something called radioactive iodine. And what you do is you go along to a special center where they'll get you to drink some radioactive iodine that sequests itself to the thyroid and actually wipes out the thyroid function entirely. Now, that gets rid of the hyperthyroidism, but obviously you need some thyroid hormone, so you need to go into a tablet um, after that, which is manageable. The other possibility we've got is thyroid surgery. As with all operations, there's risks with that. A couple of important ones, if they're messing around, uh, taking out your thyroid gland, there is a nerve that controls your voice box called the recurrent laryngeal nerve. And if that gets damaged, you could end up with a hoarse voice or really quite a dramatically changed voice. So that's a risk. The other thing is that there's some other little glands in there called the parathyroid glands. And if they get affected, that can also cause problems with calcium and bones and, and that sort of thing. So lots of information. Just to summarize, most hypothyroidism is Graves' disease. Mostly it's managed with the carbimazole and we do pretty well with that. Often after a year or 18 months, we might have a try off the, off the carbimazole to see if you still really need it. And sometimes the thyroid's gone back to normal. Sometimes it even drops down quite low and then you have to go on thyroid replacement. So you can see it's a bit of a balancing act. But generally we manage it quite well. People are often very relieved to know what's going on. They're not sure, why have I been dropping weight? Why have my mood been way out of my usual characteristic mood? So, you know, it's quite a good thing to pick up when we do, and, and it's something that we can manage. Your GP will often get an endocrinologist or hormone specialist to have a look at you as well, and make sure you're all on track. So I hope that's a bit of an overview for you about hypothyroidism. I uh, wish you well from family doctor dot expert.